Okay, welcome back, class, um, to today's session. I think we're in our session five now. Uh, so far, we have actually highlighted quite a number of issues in financial services, starting from the the overview of the financial markets or the contest of the, the Ghanaian contest. Now, today we are looking at how do you advertise financial services? I mean, uh, what considerations, what are the things that we consider when we want to advertise financial services? Obviously, we know that advertising is one of the pillars of the marketing, you know, uh, what do you call, uh, concept. I mean, marketing would never be marketing without advertising. And I think because of that relationship, most people usually confuse marketing with advertising. They, you know, occasionally, well, they normally sort of uh, replace marketing with advertising and thinking that marketing is advertising. Well, it's not. It's one of the pillars, you know, of marketing and it's a very, very essential or you know, important pillar. So we we'll look at how do you make your financial services known? Uh, to the public, uh, how do you let the public understand what it is that you are offering? And I think that's what we are going to look at, you know, here. So, if we, again, as usual, we have the session overview, you know, that says that uh, it is very important to financial services that is advertising, as it crucially influences consumers' purchasing decision making, due to the complexities of financial services and the multitude of choice. Advertising becomes an important tool with which consumers make informed choices. And that is very, very true indeed. Now, as usual, the session outline, we have the differences between advertising financial product and other products and services, challenges in financial service advertising, uh, various frameworks for advertising financial services. We'll look at that. Consumer decision making process, etc. As usual, again, we have the reading list. Now, when we say advertising, like we said, it is important that we, we, we actually understand that advertising play major role. You know, they play, you know, various roles, you know, in financial services marketing. And crucially, one is about creating awareness for the brand. Obviously, we say that a product can only be a brand when it is known in the target market i mean you couldn't actually say that this is my brand unless of course the brand has achieved that particular salience and uh, you could only have that salience you know with the support of advertising and other communication in the tools in the marketing communication uh what you call a uh, pool you know so obviously advertising is very very important in that first step of creating awareness you know, because obviously consumers would never consider your product until you have created some sort of awareness, until they have, or the brand has actually achieved some sort of, you know, salience. The brand can easily be recalled into the consumer's memory, and as a result, they can actually consider it, you know, as, you know, a potential candidate to be, to be, to be bought. So I think that crucially, we must understand it from that aspect again the advertising apart from creating awareness for the brand would also highlight the intangible product features obviously we know the financial services just like any other services is made up of a bundle of intangibles you couldn't actually see or feel you know what the product is about or the end result of the product so usually you know advertising would try to highlight the features you know of that brand of financial services and it's facilitate differentiation you know amongst competitor offerings so it is through advertising or through advertising you're able to differentiate or distinguish your product from others and say that yes we are offering x and y as an apr or we are offering you know uh, what do you call some some kind of bundle of benefits and it is only through uh, well, it's, it's through advertising one is able to do what to achieve that that differentiation between their brand and the competitor's brand. Now, differences between advertising financial product and other product or services. Uh, there are quite a number of you know uh, differences between financial product, like we have seen 
in the previous you know slides when it comes to pricing for example you know financial services don't have the hundred percent control on the price features because obviously of the intermediary role that they play you know, they they don't know necessarily you know decide but it is as a result of regulation the regulation can actually say that this is the base price and as a result you know uh, companies or different different businesses could actually you know add up or whatever you know the cost element and the profits you know kind of profitability goal is now again when it comes to financial services we must understand that the financial price the price for financial product may differ from customer to customer because obviously of what the risk credit risk aspect so when the risk assessment is done you know, for two customers depending on how risky one is from the other they're definitely going to have different you know kind of price elements then also when it comes to repayment whether somebody decide that theirs have to be spread over 36 years 36 months and someone would say spread it over 12 months because of that preference you would have variations in terms of how much one pays from the other. So you realize that the financial services is quite different from how you advertise other, you know, services. Obviously, with other services, you're likely to have a universal pricing, you know, for most services, you know, for customers. With financial services, it would be different. So you couldn't actually advertise and say, this is how much the product costs for certain. You would have to always make that room or that that statement that you know subject to someone's credit profile or someone's preference in terms of payment or terms of payment preferences and the pricing will, will change so these are some of the things that you take into consideration now the relevant attributes for financial product are undefined for many consumers like we said you know the relevant attributes for example if you're actually talking about you know the benefits that you know uh, what we call the financial product offers you and like i explained the cost aspect of it you couldn't actually define the cost aspect that it costs this amount of money because obviously of different consumer profiles and their payment plans so you couldn't actually define it for a certain you know from the beginning you know it would be from consumer case to consumer case and then again because of the intangibility you know eventually some you know may not actually experience the the end product itself i mean the benefit itself you know some of the financial you know product like term life you know insurance i mean you get the the results by the time that you're dead i mean you only get the results when you're dead so the consumer himself may not necessarily experience the quality of it you know until then then of course you know you have long-term return on a mutual fund again the the intangibility would also you know make it difficult for people to appreciate you know the value you know of it and because of the differences in times and differences in you know experiences and things you know one may actually find the quality you know as you know fulfilling the expectation others may not so you have variations in the quality perception or perception on the financial services quality you know from customer to customer so <clears throat> again because of time time values you know what will be of quality today in terms of the output may not necessarily be of quality tomorrow you know so these are some of the challenges that you know you encounter when it comes to attributes of financial services and in terms of advertising it you know it becomes difficult to make certain claims you know image has been empirically established to dominate decision making in in uh, what we call financial services obviously you know people or well, as we saw in consumer behavior when consumers are actually making decisions they go through certain stages as we have seen previously one of them is about evaluating you know the purchase evaluating uh, uh, pre pre purchase evaluation and the pre-purchase evaluation is supposed to, you know, ask whether someone, you know, is supposed to influence somebody, whether, 
you know they would want to buy a particular product or not you know in terms of comparing options now with financial services image becomes some of the i mean one of the crucial bases on which you know some some of these decisions could be could be taken i mean obviously a bank that has been in existence for the past 40 years or 30 years has a big image you know in terms of its presence in that particular uh, area now obviously in terms of you know trust whether they're going to be there for the next 20 30 years you can actually make that decision based on that particular image but of course they may also not be good you know, in delivery of a particular financial product but essentially it is that image that plays so high you know in consumers memories or in consumers decision making so it becomes very difficult you know for consumers for example to use other bases other than the kind of you know image that the company actually put out but i mean the argument is the image itself is part of uh, what you call the the brand and if a company has actually or if a financial you know, service provider has actually delivered consistently that you expect that that image of consistency will be there the trust will be there so predominantly companies actually fall on you know their image you know extensively when they're advertising you know uh, for financial product because like we said you have various you know attributes of financial services that you cannot actually define or customers have varied you know you know uh, what you call opinions or perceptions about them so the only one that perhaps you could actually fall on that would be somehow universal is about the corporate image for example you know as a long-standing bank as a bank that could be trusted and things so predominantly you know most financial services actually use image you know and again what you say in the out is closely regulated like we said in in financial services you can't just make claims you know because these are regulated by the the, the regulator you know so you couldn't actually just make claims and go away as other you know kind of you know uh, services you know can uh, would do and another challenge is about the unattractiveness or an exciting nature of the financial product i mean we're talking about figures and naturally financial services don't look good they don't look exciting in the first place the need for it itself is not exciting because one would need financial services when they're actually in need you know of a financial help you know whether it's about extending your business or it's about consumer uh, i mean the domestic use it suggests that you need help and nobody wants to actually you know kind of go out there and say that i need financial assistance so in itself is not attractive you know the basis on which people demand financial services is not attractive i mean if you're going to buy a new car for example a mercedes or you know it's actually uh, evidence of you being in control you know of some sort of resources and that rather would make it much more at, uh, exciting you know than going to seek for money you know and say that i need assistance here nobody wants to do that so the unattractive nature or an exciting nature of the financial services is also a challenge you know and financial product cannot be pictured or visualized like we said you know you can't really predetermine the end results you know how is it going to look like is it going to be a good experience is it going to be a very negative one in terms of you not fulfilling the objective you know that you went in for you know uh, based on which you went in for so it makes it a little bit you know challenging prices may vary from one consumer to the next like we've talked about and market failure consumers may not be able to understand the unique benefit of a financial product for them of, of course if someone has actually gone for a particular financial product like uh, maybe an investment fund which is you know reliant on the market i mean whenever there's a fluctuation you know it goes with it and at a point you realize that the money is dwindling you definitely wouldn't think that it was a a good product for you you know but of course if it appreciates it's vice versa 
and like we said because of the figures involved and because of you know kind of things involved usually financial services advertising hardly you know kind of uh, give out emotions they hardly evoke emotions you know because of the nature of it and it becomes difficult for you to kind of conceptualize the financial advertising in a very emotive way but yes we've seen that quite a number of companies have been successful in doing that especially when it comes to term life insurance when it comes to funeral insurance when it comes to uh, burglary and those you know uh, uh, what you call personal and casualty insurance you know companies have been fantastic in carving out very emotive you know kind of ads but it is pretty challenging in financial services to the point that if you don't take care you could be accused as a uh, taking advantage of people's situation and making the situation worse so the point is at what point do you actually show emotions in financial adverts is it that you know i mean it, it doesn't look good when somebody have actually lost you know a loved one and you actually carve an advert in that sense also showing people lo losing their loved one i mean it's not a pretty cool thing to show you know in financial you know advertising so these are some of the challenges now in considering you know financial services there are quite a lot of uh, frameworks that you have to leave, uh, financial services advertising there are quite a lot of uh, frameworks that you will actually look at you know in doing it i mean one of it is that what is the objective of the ad is the ad is it the is it to kind of uh, create awareness to create interest in the product is it for people to use it as a basis for post purchase evaluation so all those things actually come to mind and then again it's about you're looking at what's the target for the financial art is it for uh, you know the baseline people who need some cash to inject into their business you know is it for domestic use and if it's for domestic use, for what purpose is it for purchase of luxurious product or is it for daily expenditure or the daily use now these things would actually fall under you know the hierarchy of needs and things so there are quite a lot of frameworks that you can actually think about when you're considering a financial service art and one of the frameworks is consumer decision process like we said you know the communication process Maslow's hierarchy of needs and execution style of the art you know is another framework so for example when you look at a consumer decision making now the we have learned that in consumer decision making you have the need recognition as the first stage so is the ad to help the consumer to identify that they have a need or do they have a need already that you know that they have a need and they know that they have a need but then is the ad to sort of deepen their desire you know to go for the assistant the financial services assistance so the need recognition stage you know will tell you how you have to position the ad you know now you also have information search is it to kind of alert consumers where they can actually acquire the service you know or you know say that they can actually acquire the service maybe online you know you can equally do it over the phone or so the ad would also what give information or we we actually give leads in terms of the consumers information search and then of course what are some of the critical components in the financial services offering i mean what is the apr what is the period of payment and all those you know would actually go into a conceptualization of a financial services act that seek out to what to help in information search stage pre-purchase evaluation like we said there's always difficulty in consumers you know uh, uh what do you call evaluation of financial services because we talked about the variations and we talked about the intangibility so again the ad must try as much as possible to have a way of you know helping consumers to be able to do pre-purchase evaluation and like we said companies have predominantly relied on image you know the fact that they've been in existence for quite some time because financial services is one of the most difficult you know kind of sector for consumers to trust obviously you can lose your uh, what do you call your pensions 
in just a twinkle of an eye. And as a result, you know, the existence of a financial a, a pensions fund manager over a long period of time attests to the fact that perhaps they could be trustworthy or they could be the best out of the alternatives. So again, you can use our uh, financial services uh, uh, companies have actually relied on image as a key factor in helping people to evaluate you know, the benefits that the product could give at the pre-purchase stage. And then the purchase period, of course, you know, to what extent do we help the consumer in making that step, that bold step to purchase? Are you giving them like uh, assurances? Are you staggering the payments or are you kind of, you know, saying that what well, you, you don't necessarily have to pay your insurance in one go, you can stagger the payment over a period of 12 years, 36 years, uh, sorry, 12 months, 36 months, or whatever you know, the, the period is, so that people can actually purchase you know, or can actually consume the financial services. Again, in terms of you know, uh, the application procedure, are you offering them, let's say, legal advice, legal assistance, and things like that? So again, the ad must actually stipulate these things so that they can quickly, you know, get people, you know, uh, what do you call, buy or purchase, you know, the, the product. And then the consumption stage, similarly, when someone is actually making use of the financial services, for example, they applying the loan to the business that they want to, you know, engage in. Do you have some sort of business advisory systems, business advisory softwares or platforms or consultants that they can actually fall on so that they can judiciously use you know, the loan that has been acquired? So these are some of the things that you, know, you can do, the ad can do in the, in, the, in the consumption stage. And again, at the consumption stage, the ad can also reemphasize the fact that they have actually made a good sale. And that would actually or made a, a good choice in terms of you know buying the financial services. And that will actually fall within the post-purchase evaluation as well because as they're consuming it or as they're putting the product in use, you're reassuring them of they making a good, you know, or, or uh, what you call purchase or making a good decision. And that can go a long way to influence, you know, their predisposition towards it so that they don't have any negative feelings or what we call post-purchase you know, uh, uh, what they call cognitive dissonance uh, in that sense. So examples, as we have explained, these are some of the examples. For example, in the need recognition stage, an ad can say, John is married with two kids, but has no life insurance. Obviously, that tells you that if you have no life insurance and you're married with two kids, there's a danger. So this ad is basically trying to what ignite the desire or ignite or bring people's attention to life insurance that it is crucial for you, not because you want it or you don't want it, but because of your children and their future. And the fact that if you're no more, your wife could be in, in a very difficult position. So this ad can even trigger you know, John's wife to actually push for you know, the life insurance you know, as an influencer. So these are some of the things that an ad can actually do. Then, of course, the information search stage says that we may not have the lowest rate for you, but we can tell you who does. So the information search stage says we may not have the lowest rate for you, but we can tell you who does. Again, you have maybe a, a, a financial services website aggregator that actually you know kind of compare you know different different financial services you know and their offering. Now, that ad could actually signal you know, someone that, yes, if you come to our website, we can help you to kind of uh, go through all the providers and then see which one is actually good for you in terms of low rate and things like that. Pre-purchase evaluation, again, and again, this one could be used by a broker, you know, financial services broker could actually use that, an insurance broker, for example. Then pre-purchase evaluation, like you are the only investor in the world, you know, ad that is actually trying to let you feel or have a feel-good factor in considering the, 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 their choice that they treat you as an individual, 
you know and they make sure that your interest is the paramount you know consideration purchase consumption first month of life insurance free so you can see that there's a bait they're trying to let you know that yes for the first month you can actually get it free of charge and that could actually what excite someone you know to to go for the offer and then customer satisfaction is our number one priority some sort of assurance that they actually key in customer satisfaction now when you look at a communication process uh, again apart from the consumer in a decision making obviously consumer decision making is not used in isolation but it is used with or in connection with you know communication process where you always have you know the encoding up onto the decoding stage and then the cycle goes around there's always a point that you have to expose you know the product you know so the exposure stage environmental exposure at present in the environment versus cognitive exposure which is ad received by the sensors so you put the advertising there but it should be able to what, make an impact on the consumer so the advertising is the ad, ad is actually the advertisement is actually in the environment or whatever you put it whether it's a billboard radio tv or in a newspaper it must be able to be influential it must be able to make an impact on the consumer so that the senses of the consumer can capture it, you know, with by sight, by hearing, you know, even to, uh, by, by uh, what do you call, uh, by smell, you know, you have even magazines, for example, that use certain perfumes, you know, to advertise certain, you know, products in the magazines. So the advert has to have that effect on the consumer, that the consumer can easily recall it, you know, with all the senses that they have. You know, the attention, initial focus given to the incoming advertising information. Ad may be quickly filtered out and attention terminated. Of course, is your ad so powerful enough that it could prevent people from what, terminating it? And the consumers have the ability to terminate or to filter out what they want to hear, you know, uh, what they want to you know, uh, see or what they want to you know, feel. So. The ad should be so impactful that it makes it difficult for the consumer to ignore it. You know, otherwise, for example, a TV ad, consumer can actually, or the consumer is actually watching a particular program and there's an interjection of an ad. Now they have the choice to flip to another, you know, uh, what do you call channel. But if the ad is exciting and it makes that impact, of course, they see it as part of the fun. You know, some ads are even as more you know, funnier than even the program that you're watching or it's so much exciting than the program that you're watching. So consumers are not bothered to actually, you know, uh, listen to it. They would listen to it and they would love it. And at the same time, get the right information that you want to put across. So processing and acceptance, elaboration on the presented information in the ad, repetition of information in short-term memory. So again, like we're saying, the attention grabbing should also lead to what elaboration it should also lead to, lead to processing and acceptance some arts could be so long that it makes it difficult for people to process it but it or could be so um, humorous that by the time the ad is finished the consumer really can't get what it is that they were being sold to so it makes it difficult so we've got to be aware of that as well and then the retention of course remembering the content of the ad long-term memory use of information remembered for decision making like we said because of our in a limitation in short term circuitry or in our you know limitation in our brain like we said earlier on consumers have that limitation of counting beyond seven and all these things that we we learned about in previous sessions it, it, it makes sense to make sure that the attributes in arts are actually shortened or actually put in a very succinct manner that it wouldn't be over elaborated upon and consumers can easily recall recognize it and put it in in, in their retention so or in, in their memory so it is crucial that we, we we look at this framework when we are considering financial services advertise or advertisement now the Maslow's hierarchy of needs again like we said you must understand which aspect of the needs in you know, a hierarchy 
that the particular ad fall under. And once we understand it, again, it influences the content of the ad and influences the channel or the, the platform at which or on which you actually advertise. So we're saying that if the ad is about survival, for example, access to cash is a survival thing. Now, if it's survival, then of course the content would actually you know, be as such, the platform be as such. Transaction processing is a survival, protection of existing assets is a survival. Now, credit and borrowing, you can also say that it's survival, although we have it belonging to a social group. Of course, a social group because social group of people who need cash for something, all right? Or what? credit, you know, uh, 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 or a kind of social group like borrowers and things. But of course, these are not, you know, uh, by themselves exhaustive. One could, access to cash could actually be under survival or it could be under, you know, social group. You no, know, anyway. But some of them predominantly belong to a particular, you know, group as we have them here. And then, of course, when you look at ethical values, you can say meaning of life. Because, and most of the time, with the, uh, what do you call, Maslow's hierarchy, it is when people get to that top, you know, their apex, that perhaps in you know, a consideration about ethics and consideration about what the, the, uh, uh, the green agenda or activism of some sort actually comes in. Because at that point, they don't really have to worry about the basics of life you know, like food and drink and water and things, they don't really w have to worry about, you know. So that is where you have most of these ethical values, you know, kind of creeping in at the, at the top hierarchy of the mass. Another framework is the execution style. Again, you've got to think about how the ad should feature. Should it be humorous? Should it be logical? Or should it be effective? Or should it have effective impact? Now, quite a number of uh, financial services have used, you know, um, others, uh, I mean, other frameworks other than humor. Because like we said, financial services in itself is a very serious need that people, even in their own way, would love to shy away from. So injection of humor is not particularly, you know, uh, comfortable. I mean, if you look at insurance, for example, it is very hard to apply some humor to insurance. Credit cards, there had been some ads that have featured, you know, uh, humor. Like, uh, there's a fantastic ad, you know, that was done by uh, a comedian in the UK, you know, but for backless. Fantastic. But it's a credit card, you know. He speeds up and then goes to sort of football games. He speeds and goes to another, you know, or with the access of the credit, because he has access to the credit card, you know, he could do that. Now, but in most cases, we can see that it had been, uh, not humor, but it had been much more uh, other side of emotions, you know, like insurance adverts where people have been boggled, you know, you see them sorrowful, or some funeral, funeral policies where someone is struggling to actually you know, have a very befitting funeral, you know, for, for a past, you know, loved one. So in most cases, financial services apply emotions, uh, not particularly humor, uh, but most other, other you know, emotive uh, kind of ads. Now, logical arguments, usually, you know, um, again, financial, you know, uh, advertising have actually used that, you know, in logical arguments in terms of, you know, for example, uh, looking at uh, the cost of money today and the cost of money tomorrow. Say if you have to borrow X amount of money today, you know, for the expansion of your business, it may serve you better than waiting for maybe tomorrow or the next when the uncertainties, are, I mean, when there are uncertainties and you don't know how the cost of that loan, you know, would be for, for the next day. So financial institutions, increasingly use you know logical arguments you know to make case for why you need a particular financial assistance and of course if you look at the the uh, insurance you know most of the insurance ads they also use you know logic because of course if you have to travel for example and you tend to lose 
your possessions in terms of your bags and things, you lose everything. Why well, wouldn't it be advisable to just pay a little bit money in order that you can be replaced in a, in your place once you know you can be replaced in you know, whatever you've lost you know once once you, you you find yourself in that situation so most of the you know financial service acts have been logical arguments you know and of course we're talking about numbers so in most cases the logic ones you know work and then the affective impact like we said the use of you know emotions you know to to kind of uh, affect people's you know demeanor to affect people's you know psyche and things so when it works so why and when emotional appeals work in financial service advertising so when it works insurance products especially life insurance retirement planning and college funds we we say that most of the time emotions work better you know in those things why because it appeals to the most important levels of maslow's hierarchy of needs like survival financial security state of distress meaning of life financial stability state of peace now major drawback is that figure and ground the emotions may take center stage and the brand would be forgotten like we explained earlier consumers may associate advertised brand with the powerful but potentially negative emotions of the ad so in most cases whenever people find themselves in that particular state you know the brand is actually evoked it could be negative so which means that this particular company only thinks about people being boggled <laughs> you know so there's that di dilemma of you know how do you carve the ad so that your brand doesn't get associated with negative feelings and things like that so direct marketing trends in financial services direct marketing is also crucial in financial services marketing you know where customers are actually directly contacted by businesses either by mail you know or by you know any other means leafletting and things like that so that market is most effective with existing customers rather than with prospect because with existing customers you know you have access to their contacts you know you have their names their profiles so you're able to do a target the product benefits you know to their personalities or to them you know but with prospects you know you don't you don't quite you're not quite sure what they want and therefore you can't really do the targeting properly you know you may even address someone and it's not <laughs> them you know in that sense so direct marketing is properly you know good or is especially good when you use it for an you know, existing customer well be mindful that there will be some customers who are not to be called list that is in, in Ghana for example we don't we don't have that and I think when the information the, uh, the what could access the access information bill and things are passed and some of these you know privacies could actually be you know be enforced or could come into play but elsewhere here yeah, we have do not call me list or what we call the telephone preference services TPS where people can choose not to be contacted although their contact number may be in the public domain may be in the uh, what do you call the catalogs or uh, no the telephone you know kind of uh, booklet but you don't you don't have to call them when they have actually chosen that option and industry consolidation mergers and acquisitions is in the use of transaction data like we said you know in the industry there had been a lot of takeovers and acquisitions even in Ghana for example and whenever such you know things happen companies obviously naturally would share files <coughs> or they will have access to the bot companies you know kind of a, a customer database so the use of uh, what you call credit card details uh, etc of the target customer so advertised benefits put out that better match the customers need increase efficiency in advertising effort considerations in direct mail and email allow targeted approach to marketing financial product return on investment computations and list selection are needed to determine effectiveness obviously with direct marketing you'll be able to determine return on investment because you know how many emails did you send and how many of customers actually got, got back to you you know as a result so you're able to compute you know the effectiveness of it 
rather than other than uh, what you call mass mass advertising where you do it in the radio and TV and you're not able to tell how many people actually come on board knowing rate of response due to spam blocks blockers and tra treatment as junk mail obviously you know these are not solicited mails so once it goes to the customer the customer has the option to either what junk it or block it or whatever they do I mean in in mass advertising yes customers can choose to switch channels but in most cases they kind of uh, unintentionally you know listen to it anyway because sometimes they they actually you know captive you either watching a, a program and an ad start showing you may not necessarily be bothered you know to change the channel as a result you end up listening to it anyway now when it comes to direct marketing as soon as you get a mail and you see the back and it looks like it's a junk you don't even open it you just drop it you know it's as easy as that or some people have already set their email blocking system in such that what is considered as junk will never get to see to be seen anyway so these are some of the negatives of uh, what you call direct mail and therefore you know impact on response rate so coordinated media campaign so simultaneous use of multimedia media so because of some of these challenges obviously financial services like most other marketing tend to use multi-channel platforms you know in order to get the message out the use of tv direct mail you know uh, what you call radio and these days internet you know for example or even social media and let's say the press for example usually results in more response than focusing on ad spending in single medium so the assumption is that we don't know where the consumer is whether they are listening to radio they're listening to tv they're online you know even online where online are they on social media or they're reading news uh, news uh, 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 platform so it makes it very difficult to know exactly where the consumer is to be targeted as a result multi-platform is very important so that at least you you are sure that wherever the consumer is you're likely to what, get access to them and then for example 300,000 TV advertising equals 20 new policies 200,000 TV advertising plus 100,000 direct mail ads can lead to 250 new policies. Okay, so let's look at um, executing or purchasing advertising campaigns. Advertising execution, for example, uh, rich, there's a number of households who see the ad at least once. Now, so when you are just about executing the advertising for financial services, you want to think about how far would you go in terms of uh, the medium how far would the medium you know take you in reaching your target audience so you decide on the reach you decide on the frequency that's the number of times that the average household reached sees the ad now again we should be mindful of the platforms of of course when you do uh what you call tv ad for example you're likely to have a lot of reach but of course the frequency may not be as a press ad because the press ad has the opportunity to be what to be relived if you buy the newspaper today and the newspaper is there tomorrow the next day you can still have access to the ad people can still see it not the same with tv art or radio art so the one may have you a very large reach or a very you know kind of expanded reach uh, one may have you a lot more you know frequency so Again, that's the reason why combination, combining multi-platforms is good, you know, for some of these things. So gross rating points, exactly, which is uh, rich by frequency, will give you what we call the gross rating points, i.e. the effectiveness of that particular channel. You know, how much rich does it give you for what, you know, frequency. And then when you do that, you'll be able to, what, you know, decide and the most you know efficient or the most effective sorry you know of these you know platforms now if you look at a, an example here advertising response function for financial product at a given rich level we're saying that for credit cards and insurance for example you know the frequency is here and then you have the sales here so the more exposed you know people are getting you know um, 
the sales level would go go up you know for credit cards and insurance you know because the issue is that the person may not necessarily be in financial need for let's say a credit card today now tomorrow when they have that particular need is it possible that they can go and have access you know to that particular you know advertising you know in order that they will make a decision on it they so we see that the frequency at you know uh, 20 and then the sales sales you know volume i mean the sales go high because people have or people may have access to to relieve the ad and then once the situation change you know they can actually go back you know and again the insurance for example maybe if somebody's auto uh, motor insurance is up for renewal or is not for renewal you know they would not necessarily have uh, or they would not necessarily pay attention you know to the ad now once it's up for renewal uh, then there's a need for them to actually revisit so the high frequency you know the higher you know the sale because people have the opportunity to actually look at look at it now check account obviously you can see the difference between check account and insurance credit because you know it doesn't necessarily have you know uh, the uh, what you call the sale of check account doesn't necessarily have direct relationship with frequency because obviously it's it's something that you may do and you may not do when you bank you know that you're going to have a, a check account anyway when you don't bank it so it, there is no strict kind of correlation between frequency with check accounts and you know uh, sales levels than there is you know for credit cards and insurance so these are some of the variations then you can see advisory services again at some point you know there's a frequency between that and then sales especially when you are actually introducing it first you know because when you when you start the advisory services there's more personal you know kind of selling processes you know you meet people you advise them the service that you have at some point you know they get to know it and they know where it is so frequency may not necessarily have impact on what sales you know so be beware of the shape of the advertising response function because we're saying that the incremental increases in advertising will have the most effect at certain ranges of advertising frequency <clears throat> you know ideally one needs to measure the shape of the arf through experimentation similar method to testing two ads can be used for testing the same ad at different exposure frequency levels so like we said when you're sending direct mail say the number of households contacted for first mail was three thousand second mailings was two thousand five third million three thousand two fifty etc number of policies generated as a result 30 20 and 78 you know obviously this again may be as a result of people's situations you may send the first three thousand maybe at that point they didn't need you know the insurance but at this point all right or at this point the situations may, might have changed so although you sent 2800 here the response rate or the policy generated from it is high because perhaps if it's about auto ins motor insurance maybe a lot of people might have the you know insurance you know renewal period around the, that time that you sent it so the rate the response rate is higher than that one so steps in planning out an advertising program so first of all determine the objective of the advertisement like we said earlier on number of new policies generated increase awareness of the brand generating leads to determine the availability the available budget so how much do you have you know as budget to support the 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 activity and then again conduct return on investment estimation now like we said it is very not necessarily easy not that easy but i mean it is much more clear cut in doing return on investment on you know direct mailings on internet ads and things than you do for uh, mass advertising like tv radio ads and it is quite difficult to tell you know the, the response rate 
you know per per particular you know activity or advertising you know project so it is difficult for that but you still have to be able to what determine the return on investment for them determine the content of the art again like we said depending on the hierarchy of needs the kind of consumers you're targeting and then of course the consumer you know decision making models you should be able to determine the content of the ad in terms of creative development legal examination testing and etc determine media characteristics which media to be used again we've talked about frequency and reach which media will give you the highest reach which media will give you frequency and whether you've got to multi you know media that is you've got to use multiple platforms and then target audience who are you targeting execute the campaign quantify the effect of the campaign policies sold number of leads etc so computation of return on investment for financial services advertising this is where marketing analytics is very crucial you know in doing some of these things but in the meantime we can actually look at you know determine the lifetime value of an acquired customer you know you can compute return on investment based on that you know determine the number of people the advertisement would reach so here if you determine the lifetime value of an acquired customer let's say you you get a, a student account you know now you can project reasonably that this student may be with a company or with the financial services you know for the next what 20 30 years you know that is if the relationship is going to be solid you know so you can actually kind of determine the lifetime value of this particular account using the various stages in their lifetime you know being a student then move to national service then move to perhaps a first job then move to as a married person as a family as at each level of the person's lifestyle life stage you'll be able to what make you know a kind of uh, evaluation and of course you you cannot just do it like that you have to actually use certain parameters for example you have had other students account before so you have some profile of an existing you know client that was a student perhaps wasn't in the same course maybe as a business student and how the pattern has been so you can use some of these models in order to determine the lifetime value of let's say a business school student who is a, the a, what you call has a bank account with one of these banks on campus so for example so determine the number of people the advertisement will reach determine the percentage likelihood of an individual being reached becoming a customer establish adver advertising investment level and compute the return on investment ROI so that's the formula there ROI equals RX L times P times V over one and then you know you have a negative one there so that's the these ones that are spelt in that uh, kind of a uh, model so see the computation advertising return for financial product or services life insurance example so there may campaign focusing on 40 year old heads of household to sell 2500 term life insurance so one determine the lifetime value of an acquired customer and assuming the customer will renew policy for four years and an average premium for this demographic group is 855 per year and the underwriting costs are about 250 times so 250 so you have four multiplied by into bracket 850 minus 250 and that costs 240 2400 so determine the number of people that will be reached by the adverti advertisement the direct mail campaign is targeting 200,000 households in new in new york state well that's an example you know. so Again, the serial computation, determine the percentage likelihood of an individual being reached, becoming a customer. It is expected that one in every thousand individuals mailed will become a policyholder. So 0 0.001, establish the advertisement investment level. And then the ad agency commission to carry out the campaign will be used, will be asked, which is 325,000 for production and mailing compute the return on investment so again we use the formula and that comes in so media selection consideration again like we said looking at the frequency and then the reach 
you can actually do a simple table and then see you know which ones or which uh, what do you call a uh, medium do you use for which financial product and I think this can actually offer you some simplistic way of determining you know perhaps if you have some statistics about the reach of these platforms and their frequency that they offer, you can also insert them, you know, as part of your evaluation of which one. All right. So I think that that's, that actually brings us brings us to the end of the session. I mean, throughout this session, we've actually seen the kind of things that you must consider when you're actually looking at advertising, you know, for financial services. We have looked at the various frameworks like consumer decision making. We've looked at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We've looked at communication, you know, uh, what do you call, uh, cycle or the communication process. We have also looked at the execution of the advertising and the kind of things that, you know, you have actually, you have to consider in executing it. For example, the frequencies and the reach of a particular advertising in a platform. And then we have also looked at the kind of content that you need to actually push into the advertisement you know, and uh, depending on what target group you are actually looking at, and then also what 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 is the need? You know, we have looked at also whether you have to apply humor, you know, effectively in an advert. How do you apply it effectively? That or how do you apply emotions effectively? That negative emotions are not directly associated with your brand. You know, whenever customer find themselves in that particular you know situation, of course, it could be. Uh, an emotion that is not pleasant and its association with a brand could lead to positive sales. But of course, we're talking about in terms of image, you know, it shouldn't be that the brand is actually seen in that negative light. All right. Thank you for coming. And uh, if you have any questions for me, I think it's a time for me to take them. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy the session. All right. Any question? Hey, thank you for the lecture, Doc. Please, we talked about the different frameworks. I would like to know if they are used together. And if not, what are the factors to consider before choosing a particular framework? Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for the question. That was a good one. I think that, yes, it's crucial that you consider these frameworks and even beyond that. Because, for example, if you look at a consumer decision making process, and like we said, the need recognition and all this. Now, if you look at that, in the framework of hierarchy, uh, Maslow's hierarchy. Now, the need recognition for uh, someone who is actually looking at or is at the basic needs level would entirely be different from the one who is at the apex, which is the actualization, as we saw with them. So, again, that would influence the content of the ad. So, I think that it's crucial that you use those models or those uh, frameworks in, uh, together you know, in connection with each other so that you'll be able to make a very good decision as to what content you must use and what is the reach. Now, obviously, if you're actually targeting the super rich in society, you're almost certain that you can actually use newspapers, especially, let's say, business, business and financial times, for example. Now, that using that with the advertising execution framework that we looked at, you know, would be ideal. Uh, will be the best to do and then of course the consumer decision making more than the Maslow's you know so it is good to use those frameworks together you know of course it's not like an exercise or a homework that you put all together and then by by virtue of executing the ad or planning the ad itself you realize that some of these naturally will come to you you know if you make you want to make some references you can check in one or two books to make sure that yeah at least you've got a concept right but I think naturally it comes to you that once you're actually considering adverti advertisement, you know, for super rich, I mean, which medium do you use? And, you know, what content do you go in there? Naturally, as you do that, you are effectively using these models, you know, or these frameworks, you know, together. And obviously even beyond them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc. Please, considering the nature of advertising, uh, can't we say that adverts create duress on the customer? Okay. Well, uh, thanks very much for the question. Well, you're precisely right. I mean, the the duty or the role of advertising is to get you convinced, is to kind of influence your thoughts. So, 
given your own self, you may not necessarily make a decision toward that particular brand. Now, the work of advertising is supposed to persuade you. It's supposed to influence your thoughts so that, I mean, influence your thoughts towards that particular brand. So you're right to say that advertising sort of a, um, kind of pushes the consumer or create duress, or you can say that consumers, you know, hands are actually in a twisted in order that they can think about a particular brand. But it's also good to say that you know, it is as a result of also what giving information, you know, because if you haven't been told, you know, of the options available, how do you then make choice? Now, position this in this manner. If the consumer is not actually exposed to advertising and the consumer is actually exposed to advertising, the two instances, which one will create the rest for the consumer? The fact that you don't know what options are available itself is, is very stressful and could be of immense duress than knowing that there are choices. So yes, it creates duress, but I think positively it enhances the customer's opportunity to make choice. You know, it is like asking whether education creates duress and somebody will say that, well, look at what illiteracy then. You know, not having education and having education which one creates more duress? You know, obviously education means you've got to be committed to a certain pattern, early morning shower and go to class and learn. It's creating duress itself. But when you're uneducated, I think that, you know, the duress will be much more than you going through that pattern. So yes, it does, but I think it's a positive one. Thank you for these questions. I think that it's been amazing. And the session, I'm sure you have enjoyed it. I have actually enjoyed it myself. And especially the questions were very deep, and you know, I think that it goes to kind of, uh, you know, emphasize or it goes to, you know, show how you know you have taken the sessions and how you have actually, to what extent that you have actually grabbed it. And I'm sure the ones we use some of these things, these frameworks, or these discussions in our daily, you know, work operations at work, I'm sure it will go a long way to affect our performance and affect the bottom line of financial institutions generally. Thank you once again for coming and hope to see you in the next session. Thank you.